Man, we look around tonight, we've got to have a shotgun message tonight. You sort of scattered out a little bit, so we'll have to use a shotgun message to sort of cover everybody. Thank you, Brother Steve. Everybody see Steve. Yeah. Amen. All right, it's good to see you. Teresa called and or text and said she's not feeling well. Her blood pressure's up, so they won't be here tonight. So pray for them. Pray for Brother Bill and Henrietta Strawn. They, on their way back from Virginia, they went up for a funeral service for Brother Bill's sister, so they're on their way back. They text or called and said they wouldn't make it back in church, but keep them in prayer. And then we want you to pray for Angel Godfrey. She's uh, probably maybe still be in surgery now. They were doing surgery on her back today, and they were going to have to make 10 incisions in her back. And then in the morning, she's going to have to have another surgery uh, on her hip. And uh, so pray for her. And this past uh, day before yesterday, she had to have surgery on her arm, her hand, and her wrist because she's been through a lot. So Keep her in your prayers and pray that uh, she'll get better and get well and recover from this. They told her today it would be two weeks before she could set up and eight weeks before she could get up. So uh, pray for her. It's going to be tough on her, tough recovery. So keep her in your prayers. And, of course, keep our sick and our shut in. Continue to pray for Lainey. Uh, Lord, bless her and help her to get back to church soon. And pray for Frank Bailey and uh, Rick Melton. Keep them in our prayers. Pray for Wilma Pugh. And Lord, just touch those. I know there's probably others. We'll take prayer requests in a moment. So let's stand, if you would, please, and we'll go ahead and get started and, and uh, ask the Lord's blessing upon, uh, the, upon these requests and also upon uh, the service tonight. And also, don't forget, and let's remember and pray for revival. Well, we need, need to pray for revival. I'm excited about what the Lord's going to do for us. Brother Marvin Petit, would you pray for us, please? Amen. Yes. If you need your hymnals, it's going to be hymn number 314, Amazing Grace, and we're going to sing all four verses.
more verse. Praise God. Everybody sing it with me. Praise God. 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 be seated. Brother Ronnie's going to come and sing for us this evening. Students like to fight against deadly ways on the bottom of desperate. No hope could be found when I had no answers. Earth came down and cleansed all my sins the blood of the lamb made me whole again I stand redeemed his grace I Cause mercy, mercy came down. I did not deserve his help from above. Cause I had rejected the gift of his love. But he looked past my faults He saw sin had me bound When I could not go up Hallelujah Mercy came down And mercy came down And cleansed all my sin blood of the Lamb made me whole again. I stand redeemed. His grace I found. All because mercy, mercy
wouldn't be here tonight, but uh, because of his mercy, because of his grace, because of his goodness. We're going to take prayer requests, so those of you that have one, we'll let you share that with us tonight. And uh, I already mentioned about Teresa and uh, them not being here tonight. I mentioned about Angel and the other, some of the shut-in folks. So we'll start over here as we always do. If anybody on this side have a prayer request, just raise your hand. Everybody good? Okay, well. Debbie? I appreciate it. You all would um, continue to remember my family. The Lord knows the need. Got a um, court hearing coming up this month that's... Um, Really need your prayer. Thanks. Okay. Jada? Pray for my family. I know they need it. Okay. All right. Anyone else on that side? Miss uh, Marie? I'll just pray for my family. Okay. Miss Martha? Please pray for me as I'm facing the problem with my back and the MRI and that they'll find the problem and I'll be able to get some relief. Okay. Thank you. It's good to see you. We missed you since you've been out. So good to see you tonight. Miss Carolyn? Y'all continue praying for Eunice. They are trying to make the decision about what they're going to do. Her heart is so weak. They can't do the what the surgery that's going to do. So maybe nothing they can't do. So y'all just pray for her. Okay. Sure will. Okay. Better Ronnie? I have an opportunity to go to Haiti in July, so just pray that the Lord will either let me go or keep me home or whatever he decides to do. Okay. All right. Anybody in this section? Brother Russell? Just want to pray for all my family, saved and unsaved. Anyone else? This section here? Ms. Frankie? I've got several. <laughs> okay, first of all, my last loved ones. And then uh, Danny and Iris Martinez, they're both sick, and I'm going to have to take her to the doctor tomorrow. She has a real bad cough, and she's 95 years old, and she's got a bad heart, too, so we've got to be very careful with her. So pray for her, Iris Martinez. And also, um, I'm having a lot of trouble with high blood pressure. The doctor says if I don't get down, I'm going to keep on having a stroke. And also my back. And so just pray that they find out what's wrong and I'll get back to my old self again. Okay. All right. Noah? Pray for my mom and dad. Okay. Pray for my friend because her cousin broke her leg. Anyone else back that way? Okay. On this side? Best of it. Just remember my family. Okay. Thank you. Vesta? Um, <clears throat> David's oldest children are graduating this year. And Anna, bless her heart, you know, when they get older, they think, they're grown and they know everything and they don't want to listen to the parents and there's a situation that's hurting my heart and <coughs> there's a little bit of conflict and I want the Lord to get that resolved and that family to serve the Lord better and allow God to be in the center okay. instead of her wanting what she wants and not thinking about the spiritual. Okay. Ms. Norma? Uh, my brother Bobby, he's still having problems. Remember David and Kenny, I'm trying to get them to come to the revival, and they say they will, but just pray real hard for them. Mm -hmm. Okay. Ms. Loretta? I would like everyone to remember a young lady by the name of Caitlin Sullivan. She and her husband are stationed in Hawaii, and they went on a hike Saturday. And she sat down to rest, and she wasn't able to get back up. They had to airlift her out of the mountains. And they're trying to get her back into the uh, state side so they can find out what's going on. She's got two young children, so no. remember her. Okay. Remember that request. Anybody else back that way? Ms. 
Doris. Thank Hold on. Lord, that I was able to be here tonight. I've had a bad day today, so I appreciate your prayers. And uh, I want to be able to come to that revival, so I got to get better. Amen. Praise the Lord. Looking forward to that. <clears throat> I'll give you the desires of your heart, so let's pray that, that you'll feel all right to come. Dot. And I need prayer for my great grandbaby and a friend of mine, Mark Schaefer. Okay. All right. Anybody else? Preacher, uh, Nathan Worthy's on my heart. You know, he was a straight A student when he was here. And now he's done drop down to C's and D's, and he, he might not get to play football this year. Just pray for him. Let him go. Okay. Get it back. I mean, he get. He don't have nobody that cares for him, but the Lord. And I know He knows him, but the family. You know, Breeze, Kathy, and then Brianna. I mean, uh, Riley is Cam's and Kelly. But he's just out there by himself, and I'm going to try to go over and talk to Kelly, see if I can, she won't let me keep him for a while, see if I can get his grades back up for him. And I'd appreciate the prayers. Okay. <clears throat> Anyone else? All right, maybe you can get Miss Patty straightened out. So pray for, pray for her. If you didn't hear, Brother Roy said she has been referred to a surgeon. I saw that on Facebook. So uh, let's pray for Patty that that doctor will be able to do whatever needs to be done to help her. But let's pray God to touch her and uh, get her well and get her better. That can happen before the doctor ever does anything, okay? All right, let's have the ushers come forward and receive the offering for the evening. And we'll pray for the prayer requests uh, once we, uh, when we pray for the offering. <clears throat> All right, let's ask the Lord to bless the offering tonight. Brother, and the prayer request. Brother Dennis, would you pray for us, please? Yes, we do, Father. Thank you for being so good to us. Yes. 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 Amen. Thank you, Brother Dennis.
send a light, a blessed gospel light. That's what we're supposed to be doing. Send the light. Let your sparks fly. Amen. Amen. Good to be in the Lord's house tonight. Amen. Sure appreciate the opportunity that we have to be here on a regular basis. We'll make a couple of announcements. Don't forget the ladies meeting tomorrow night at 6 o'clock here at the church at the Fellowship Hall. All you ladies are invited, so come if you can. And then we got a couple of announcements that we'll be making, well, they're not too far in the future. Don't forget, uh, Saturday, April the 20th, from 11 a.m. until 2 p.m., we'll be having our annual Easter party and luncheon uh, for the kids and for the adults. So uh, we have a lot of those plastic eggs sitting back there on the table in the fellowship hall. And if you would get some of those and fill them with candy and bring them back, uh, that'd be a real blessing. You don't have to buy the eggs. There's plenty of them back there. And we got another uh, crate of them down in the building if we, if we run out. So get all you need and all that you want and bring them on that day. And uh, bring, uh, bring something to eat. We'll furnish the chicken and the ham or whatever we're going to have that day. So we'll start at 11 o'clock. That's on Saturday, April the 20th. And we'll have some... We're going to have some uh, a bounce house and a blow-up slide and everything for the kids. And uh, we're looking forward to it. Invite some of your friends to come and be with us, okay? And then don't forget uh, Mother's Day is coming up not too far away. On Saturday, May the 12th uh, from 11 to 2, there's going to be uh, a Ladies' Day, Mother's Day lunch here at the church. And so we want you all ladies to come and take part. And the name, the ladies guest speaker is Lee, Lenora Pesakic. Y'all don't know. We had somebody we can't even pronounce her name. Pesargic. Yeah. I don't, did y'all say Esther how to spell it? Pesargic. Yeah, okay. Now I know who it is. I thought that might have been Khrushchev's wife or something. I didn't know. <laughs> you have to be careful. You never know. But anyway, so, so good to be here uh, tonight and looking forward to it. Good to have you in the Lord's house and hope and pray tonight that you come expecting and seeking a blessing. That's God to do something for us. Don't get to pray for revival. Revival's coming up May the 5th through the 10th, and uh, I sure am excited about it. I'm looking forward to it. And I, I just believe everything that's working out is being ordered up by God himself. And so it's a blessing tonight that we can uh, anticipate uh, this. And don't forget, the uh, uh, on Friday night, uh, May the 3rd, we're going to have a, bond, uh, a revival bonfire. Not a far. That's <laughs> two country. Fire. F-I-R-E. Bonfire. Say that three times real quick. Amen. But anyway, we're looking forward to it. Bring your own log. Those of you that wasn't here Sunday, uh, you missed out on that. We had a great day Sunday. The Lord was really blessed, and I enjoyed it so much and, and uh, excited about what the Lord's going to do for us. But bring your own log. I told them to bring a log. And, uh, and the Bible says, and I read that verse to you. I won't read it again tonight, but over in the book of Isaiah, chapter 50, verses 11 and 12, the Bible says sometimes you've got to make your own sparks. So bring your own log to make your own sparks. And uh, write on that log. If you can write on the log, that's fine. If you can't, put a piece of paper on it, wrap it around it with a rubber band or other how, ever how you can attach it, and write on there what's in your life that you feel like you need to get rid of in order that you can experience a Holy Ghost God, a Holy Ghost God sent revival. And it, let me just say, every one of us has got something in our life, every one of us. And um, we've mentioned this, and we've been talking about this for the last few Wednesday nights on that abundant life that we're to have. And, folk, I believe with all my heart, we won't really understand that abundant life until we fully understand that we need a revival and a new spirit in our hearts tonight, as David said. And he said, create in me a clean heart and renew a right spirit within me. I appreciate uh, those that are excited about revival. I've got some texts this week 
from people that are excited about revival. They're excited about the bonfire. And uh, they're, ready for, they're ready to get involved and take part in it. Brother Robert said he can bring some firewood. And, and uh, Brother uh, Roger Skipper said, Preacher, I got some kindling. So, hey, the little bit of, hey, that kindling's little wood to get the big wood started. So we want to have a big fire for Jesus, amen? And uh, this church, we want it to, uh, by, by its people, we want it to be on fire for the Lord. And uh, we, want a, we want a revival this year uh, that will make a difference in our church and make a difference in our people. And who can say it can't make a difference in our community? It can spread. And uh, no reason why it couldn't and no reason why it shouldn't. So we want you to do all that you can to invite people to come and be with us and be a part of this revival service. We have choirs that will be with us each night except for Wednesday night. Our choir will be singing also a couple of songs each night. Brother Mike will be in charge of that and getting all that lined up and getting it ready. But um, uh, Manor Baptist Church is going to be with us on Monday night. And then uh, uh, Sister Jessica Huffman's going to come and sing for us on Sunday night of the revival. And Brother Milton Taylor will be with us uh, on Sunday morning and Sunday evening. And Jessica will be here singing a couple of songs for us on Sunday night. And then Manna Baptist Church will be here on Monday night. Uh, Bible Baptist Church from Landmark will be here on Tuesday night. Uh, Emmanuel Baptist Church family will be here on Wednesday night, I hope, and pray. And then Thursday night, Morning Star Baptist Church uh, from Packlet will be here. And then on Friday night, we will have the uh, Crossroads Rescue Mission from up in Shelby, uh, North Carolina. So we're looking forward to all these folks coming down being a part of the service and just uh, and looking forward to the good preaching. I believe it's going to be ordered up of, uh, of God himself. Brother Taylor will be preaching Sunday, Brother Jeremy Chisholm Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, and Brother Barry Spears on Thursday and Friday. I, 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 you know, I don't plan to miss. I'm planning on being here. And I, if something comes up and I can't be here, I know there's two occasions uh, that I hadn't been able to be at church on the time that I was really looking forward to it. One of them was the, the last fish fry that we had. Uh, wasn't able to come to that because I was sick. And then there was another time I couldn't come. No, well, that was New Year's Eve, but there was another time I wasn't able to come because I was sick. And we, I can't remember who that preacher was that was here. But he was going to preach on prophecy, and I can't remember who he was for nothing. But I wasn't able to come. That time. So there's been times that, well, I mean, I want to be here every time the doors are open. I mean, I want to be here. They said, well, preacher, you're supposed to. You're the preacher. Not any more than you're supposed to. Amen. You're supposed to be here too because <laughs> you're a church member. And, uh, of course, we've got a lot of folk tonight that's not here because of various reasons. But anyway, I, I, I plan on being here and I want to be here and I hope nothing comes up and nothing happens that will keep me from being here the nights that we're going to have revival because I really believe with all my heart God's got something special for us this year. Just I just feel it in my heart. I feel it in my bones. I feel it. I feel it all over, amen. And uh, I get cold chills just, just thinking about it. You say, oh, preacher, that's because the air conditioning's on. No, it ain't because the air conditioning's on. I think I just felt a good breeze go by here a minute ago called the Holy Ghost, amen. And I pray and hope he, he comes in and showers us and blesses us uh, during our revival, and, and let's just keep inviting people. Don't forget that Sunday uh, is filler up Sunday. Now, let me mention this before I, before I go any further. For last, I forget, Miss Ann is sick also, so pray for Miss Ann Sweet. She's been sick and having a bad cough, so let's pray for her. She'll get better. And then Linda's uncle, John Morrell, the one that comes by every now and then and sings for us. Uh, John Morrell's in the hospital. Found out today. Just seen his wife at the hospital in the surgical waiting room, but he had a hip replacement. And also he had a steel rod that had been in his leg for 25 years. They removed it. And, and he had a problem with a foot that was turned out. And they was trying to straighten it up some. And so uh, pray, for, pray for John Morrell. I told his wife that we'd pray for him tonight. So we don't want to forget that. But pray for him. And then uh, may the Lord just bless us. Have a great time. Looking forward to our revival. Invite people that Sunday. We want to have filler up Sunday. Now you're going you're gonna to look at me cross-eyed when I tell you this. But I want us to have a $14,000 offering on that Sunday morning. Don't everybody shout at one time. I know a God that can do it. I know a God that can do it. 
You say, well, preacher, why you want that? So we can put it in the Lord's Word. Do whatever we need to do. Hey, I don't, God's not in the box. He's able. He's one of you here could write a, I could write a check for it, but the check wouldn't be no good. <laughs> so, to, you know, if you write a check, make sure it's good. And, uh, but anyway, I, I'm, I am. I'm expect, I want the Sunday school classes to be filled up. I want the church house to be filled up. No way we can do that. You've got to call your friends. You've got to call your family. You've got to call people that live beside you, people that you work with. You've got to do what you can to try to get them to church. You say, well, preacher, I've asked them before. I, well, let's, let, let's ask them at least one more time and try to get them here. Bring your grandchildren. Bring your, bring your aunts and your uncles and your cousins and all them kind of folk, down the line folk. Hey, we'll bring them all in. And let's try to fill the church up that, uh, that evening or that, that day at the, uh, here. And then, we'll, of course, have, we'll have dinner. And uh, then we'll come back for the evening service and uh, just expecting a great time. But fill it up on Sunday. When the people go by, the church on Sunday mo- on that Sunday morning, I want them to say, boy, there's not a parking place in the parking lot. I want us to have to park in the field. I want it to look like trunk or treat night when the people park out in the field and on the roads. Have to get a sheriff deputy to direct traffic. Boy, that'd be a blessing, wouldn't it? But anyway, you say, can God do that? Sure he can. But we got to do our part. We got to do our part and, and try, to, hey, tr- try to get our church members here. Hey, Amen. We need our church family here. And I hope you plan to, plan to come and support the meeting uh, each night of the revival. We went, we went to a revival service uh, last week over at the church over in Taylor's. And uh, I know the preacher was embarrassed. But hardly any of his people there. He didn't say anything about it. But they talked like on Sunday night they were just packed out. And then on Monday night they had just a, just a handful of people. That's discouraging. It's discouraging to the pastor. Can I say it's embarrassing sometimes to the pastor when you have more visitors than you have your own people. And listen, we're not having this revival for visitors. We're having this revival for our people. We're the one that needs it. So I hope and pray that you'll support it and be here and be in your part. You say, preacher, all I can do is my part. That's all I ask. Just do what you can do. And the Lord will bless you. And listen. I believe once we have this great revival that we're going to have, I'm, I'm calling it a great revival. I'm expecting it. I believe once we have a great revival, we're going to see some people walking around and living a more of an abundant life for the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, y'all look like y'all just about give out. Y'all like y'all just wore out. Y'all been digging ditches today? Dennis has. Anybody else dig ditches today? Everybody just tired? I think we'll get them to do a few calisthenics. Get everybody loosened up a little bit. Get the blood flowing a little bit. What do you think, Corey? <laughs> Corey said, let's get it. Amen. <laughs> All right. Hey, maybe I can get you charged up a little bit with a word as we look into the word of God. First portion of the scripture we're going to read tonight will be over in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter number 3. 1 Corinthians chapter number 3, talking about the abundant life. We're going to get these two little verses here and get on down to where the Lord uh, led us to get to tonight. Concerning the abundant life is a yielded life. We know that, uh, and I think I read this to you last week, but I want to read it again because of the importance that it is to each and every one of us as believers. A dynamic, an abundant living is not just for a few. It is God's norm for all believers. It is spiritual life in depth, and without it, the Christian life becomes meaningless. If you do not have an abundant life within you, now listen to this, you will soon yield to the carnal or the fleshly life that is around you. In 1 Corinthians chapter 3, uh, verses 1 through verse number 4, I want to read that portion of Scripture to you tonight where the Bible says, and this whole entire uh, chapter here deals with... uh, the first part of it, down through verse number 10, uh, deals with the, the uh, carnal state of, of, uh, and that hinders spiritual growth. And that's what we got to realize. When we get to the state in our life when the carnality of our life begins to hinder the spiritual growth or hinder the abundant life that we should be having in the person of the Lord Jesus Christ, that's when we need revival. That's when we need for God to work in our lives once again. Verse number 1 of 1 Corinthians chapter 3 says, And I, brethren, could not speak unto you 
un, un, as unto spiritual, but as unto carnal, even as unto babes in Christ. I have fed you with milk and not with meat, for hitherto you were not able to bear it, neither yet now are ye able. For ye are yet carnal, for whereas there is among you envying and strife and divisions, are ye not carnal and walk as men? For while one saith, I am a Paul, and another, I am a Paulus, are ye not carnal? You see, we begin to get our eyes and our focus off of the main thing. Can I say tonight that the Lord Jesus Christ must be, and we must keep him as the main thing. When we allow other things, when, that, when our focus is not upon him, when he's not the main thing. And we say right here, we use the phrase Jesus first. And folks, I still believe that's the way that it's supposed to be and have to be for us to have that abundant life that we live in Christ and not be faced with the, the, with the carnal life that we battle against and we have a, have a war against on, on a daily basis. We must have that abundant life, but we can't do it if we allow the carnality to come and to creep into our lives. And listen, if we're not real careful, it'll happen. You know, say there's still people uh, drinking uh, the milk of the word. Now, babies need milk. Newborn babies, they need milk. When they first come into this world, they can't eat a T-bone steak. They can't. Y'all with me tonight? We ain't having tacos no more. No more tacos. This done got everybody... I don't know what's wrong with you. No more tacos. Amen, Hancho, <laughs> Burrito or whatever. <laughs> Amen. Wake up a little bit. It's this carnal life that allows us not to come in and rejoice as we should and rejoice in the Lord and be happy in the Lord. You want your preacher happy, don't you? You want your preacher jumping up and down and shouting and praising the Lord? You want your preacher walking down the aisles and walking down the steps? Hey, I, I, I'd like to see a little movement among you every now and then too. Just first, hey, let me know that you're awake. <laughs> Stir around, move around a little bit. Amen? Amen? Praise the Lord. Glory to God. I want revival. We can't have revival unless we get fired up. I don't know if a bonfire will do it or not, but I'm worth trying that and something else if we have to. We might have a fireworks show. I don't know what we need, but whatever we need. But listen, I'll tell you what we need. We need God to get all over us. That's exactly what we need. We need God to get all over us and use us and work in our lives and get all this carnality and all this junk that's in our life. Get it out of the way and let God move as only he can move. But I notice in verse number three, and this is where we are a lot of times today, folk, in our churches, where the Bible says that we're carnal, for there is among you envying, strifes, and divisions. You know, it's a sad thing when the people of God can't get along as the people of God. It's amazing to me when this group on this side, and I'm not saying that this is, this is the way, this is just a figure of speech. This side over here is against this side over here. You know, it shouldn't ought to be that way. This person should not be against that person. We shouldn't have nothing but good to say about each other. Amen. Now listen, I know we all get on each other's nerves. I know sometimes we get on our last nerve. But sometimes you expose your nerve way too often. If you put a chip on your shoulder, somebody's going to knock it off. You can rest assured of that. So don't walk around with a chip on your shoulder. Walk around and with a good attitude and, and a good uh, facial expression and, and just uh, look excited and be pleased. I noticed what Frankie put on Facebook the other day, that she wants back what she once had. You see, that's what revival is. Going back and getting back what we once had in our lives. If we were excited one time for Jesus, we ought to be excited now. And if we're not excited, we ought to go back to where we lost that excitement and pick it up and carry it away again and get that excitement that we ought to have and should have back in our life for the cause of the Lord Jesus Christ. People get excited over things that they want to. Amen? 
Uh, you know, but it's hard, it's hard today to get them excited about the things of the Lord. And it's, you know what? And you know what they say? It's left up to you, preacher. You got to get us going. I think about getting some cheerleaders up here. <laughs> yeah, don't worry about it. You ain't going to be wearing them short skirts like they wear. <laughs> and, uh, you know, they have these cheerleaders at football games and basketball games. And what they're trying to do, they're trying to get the crowd excited. Literally what they're doing, they're down there making idiots out of themselves. Miss <laughs> Martha, you think you can do a cartwheel? <laughs> don't think so? Okay, we got some. We need somebody to do cartwheels. No, I'm not. I'm, hey, I'm. I'm. I'm just kidding, and you know that. But I'm saying, whatever it takes to put the zest back in your life for Jesus, and I'm gonna tell you what it's gonna take. It's gonna take this book. It's gonna take some time in the prayer closet. It's gonna take some time fellowshipping with Him. It's gonna take some time fellowshipping with God's people. And tonight, I was going to speak on this thought. An abundant life is a yielded life. Let's face it, folk. We have not laid it all on the altar for him. That's our problem. That's our problem. We haven't laid it all on the altar. Sometimes we'll sing that hymn or Miss Linda will play that hymn on the piano. I surrender all. We haven't done that. There's probably not one Brother Roy in this building tonight, including myself. It says, Lord, here it is. Whatever it is, it's yours. That's what we need to do. That's what we ought to do. That's what we should do. But it is hard and it is difficult to do that. But if we are to experience that life that is abundant, that we enjoy him, then we must do that. The Bible tells us that we should have that abundant life. We see the carnal life is, is controlled by circumstances and situation. The abundant life is controlled by the Holy Spirit. Life leads to victory in Christ. Man seems to know everything about life except how to live it abundantly. From this moment on, we should determine not to be satisfied with anything less than God's best, and living life abundantly. We are living below our means in our spiritual life. God expects us to have that abundant life. In the book of Romans, if you'll turn, please, I'm going to read a couple of few verses of Scripture there, Acts, Acts Romans, and chapter number 6, if you'll turn there. I want you to notice concerning this portion of Scripture about the abundant life is a yielded life. Chapter 6, verses 10 down through verse number 13. Let me get here. Verse number 10. The Bible says, For in that he died, he died unto sin once. But in that he liveth, he liveth unto God. Likewise reckon ye also yourselves to be dead Indeed, unto sin, but alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Let sin, let not sin, therefore, it reign in your mortal body, but that ye should obey it in the lust thereof. Verse 13, this is it. Neither yield your members of instruments of unrighteousness unto sin, but yield yourselves unto God as those that are alive from the dead and your members as instruments of righteousness unto God. We see that the word yield here in this verse of Scripture means to produce, to present, to give in return, to produce as a result, to profit or surrender. That's what the word yield means here in this verse. And we see here in verse number 13 that we are not to yield our members as instruments of unrighteousness. We, we know what unrighteousness is, just doing those things which are wrong. That is unrighteousness. But the Bible says that we are to yield ourselves to God as instruments, uh, as members as instruments of 
righteousness unto God. And unrighteousness is doing that which is wrong. Righteousness is doing that which is right. Amen. Amen. It's not uh, righteousness and unrighteousness is a long word, but they're just simple meanings. Well, unrighteousness means wrong. Righteousness means right. And listen, we, we're old enough, and we know right from wrong. Hey, the kids, they come along, we train them up. They, they, they learn what, what's right and wrong at an early age. Amen. And, a lot, and that's the way it is with some of God's people. Some of God's people, they, they, they still are drinking the milk. Paul says, I can't feed you with meat because you're not strong enough. You haven't grown up enough. In the book of Job, the Bible says that Job was a perfect man. That doesn't mean that Job was sinless. That didn't mean that Job did not commit sin. But it just simply means that he was a mature Christian. I think some of us just need to grow up. Christians, uh, 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 speaking as far as our Christian life is concerned, we need to grow up. It's amazing to me. Well, how little, simple, and silly things can affect people in a church. They can get upset because their point broke off of their pencil. They can get upset because the preacher didn't speak to them. And that's because they went out the side door. Amen, preacher. I know why y'all go out that side door. Y'all dodging me. No, I'm, I'm just kidding. I know some of you have to go out there. I understand that. I'm just having a little fun. But, that, you, but it's surprising and amazing to me how it's so easy that the reason we can't get and have that abundant life and live a life of righteousness as unto God is because of those little things. Those little things that keeps us from reaching the plateau that God wants us to be for him. You know what, folks? It's sad to say, but some of us are living down here when God wants us to live up here. And it's not God's fault. It's not the preacher's fault. It's not the church's fault. You know, it, it kills me when people, uh, and not just our church. I mean, I've heard of people uh, leave other churches, and, and one of the reasons they'll say they leave the church is because they're not getting fed. Not getting fed. Well, you don't need to be spoon fed all the time. You got to feed yourself. And people that say that, I'm not a betting man, I'm not going to bet, I'm not going to say I would bet you, but I'll guarantee you if you check this out, this is what would happen. The people that say that have no private time in that book and they have no private time in their prayer closet. Blame it on somebody else. Blame it on the church. Blame it on the preacher. It's not my fault that I'm dying spiritually. It's not my fault. Hey, why weren't you at church on Sunday? Why didn't you come to Sunday school? Hey, you need all you can get and can all you get because it comes from this book, comes from this word. We don't want to dry up as Christians in order to yield fruit and to have an abundant life. we got to be fed what causes us to produce. you got to get under the water of the word. we got them peace lilies sitting out there in the, in the lobby of the church there. And if they go unwatered, and if they don't get the sufficient amount of water, and I know you've seen them, some of these get the same way sometimes, but they'll just look like that. And then you can buy and you can put about a half a gallon of water in them peace lilies. In about an hour's time, they... You know what happened? We ain't getting nothing to water the Word. But Paul, and the Bible says in 1 Peter that we are to desire the sincere milk of the word that ye may grow thereby. In other words, we need to get off the bottle, brother buddy, and get a hold of the stake of the word and grow and learn some things in the Bible, learn the doctrines, learn the simple plan of salvation. I just, you know, it would surprise us tonight 
of how many people that's in this building that would not know biblically how to take the Word of God and lead somebody to Jesus. And if there's anything we ought to know tonight as people of God, we ought to know how to show somebody in that book how they can be saved and born again. If we could take the Bible and show them. It's very simple. Just through the Romans road. It's not, it's, you don't have to be a, have a doctorate degree to do that. You don't have to be a great theologian. You don't have to quote the Bible from cover to cover. You don't have to know and, and quote 1,500 scriptures by memory to do that, but it's just simple and plain. But we fail to fill ourselves with those things that will cause us to grow and mature and to desire things in this book that we have not desired before. People don't desire it. Romans chapter 6, verses 10. We read that to you. Concerning how that we are to yield ourselves unto God. When I think about the word yield, when I think about surrender, I think about people that I run into from time to time. And the reason they're going through so many things is because they never yielded their life to Christ. I told you the word yielded there means to surrender. It means to profit. It means to produce. It means to return, give and return. But as I look at the word surrender, I know of people that have been in church before they were faithful, they were regular, but they got out of church, got running around with the wrong crowd, got doing the wrong things, and they lost everything they had. I've seen people go through things because they got out of church. And the Bible tells us that God will chasten those that he loves. Can I say tonight that our God is a God of love. He loves you, he loves me, but he does not love what we do sometimes with our life. He does not love sin. And the Bible says, whom he loveth, he chasteneth. If you don't yield your life to Christ, and we got some, and I know some folk, and you probably do too, that once was in church and living for God, and they got out of church, started doing their own thing. I'm talking about young people and older people. I talked to a young man just this past Saturday. He lost everything he had, had a great job, making a lot of money, had a nice home, nice house, nice property, had a nice family, boys and girls, nice wife, beautiful wife, and he threw it every bit away over drugs. You know why? Because he got out of church and he quit yielding his life unto the Lord. That's what I read to you a moment ago. If you do not yield your life and have an abundant life in Christ, you will, you will begin to have a carnal life and that carnal life will lead into destruction for your life. And let me just say this. You're not the only one that will end up being hurt. I believe, there's, hey, I believe there's graves in the cemetery today, folk, because people didn't yield their lives to Christ. God don't owe you anything. We understand that, don't we? He don't owe us nothing. We owe him everything. And listen, he don't, he, he, he don't want us to pay him back monetarily. We don't have to try to write a check for $100,000 to give God. God don't need your money. He don't need money. But he wants you. 
Romans chapter 12, 1 and 2 says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed and, and, and renew your mind and live for God and serve for the Lord Jesus Christ. That's what he wants. He wants you. But people today fail to yield to him. I, I, I believe this, brother, brother Russell. I believe there's a deadline that we can cross as far as God is concerned. As I said, I believe there's people in the graveyard tonight because they cross God's deadline. You say, preacher, you're trying to, trying to scare us. No, I'm trying to get you to live for God. I want, I'm trying to get you to live uh, the life that's abundant and yield yourselves unto the Lord and serve Him and put Him first and let Him make a difference in your life. That's what it's all about. Hey, I'm the happiest, listen, I'm the happiest I've ever been in my life. I've been saved over 50 years, and I, I'm the happiest I've ever been in my life. And hey, and, and the thing about it is, I, I, got, I, I don't have near as many years ahead of me that I've got behind me. But all that I've got in front of me, I want to live my spiritual life to the fullest in order that I live abundant life and God can bless. Let me just give you a couple of things here right quick. Number one, you see, it's one thing to have eternal life, but faith, by have eternal life by faith, it is quite another thing to have abundant life by faith. And God expects us to have that abundant life. Look, if you would, please, to the book of Colossians, uh, chapter number three. Let me turn over there right quick. Colossians. Chapter 3, verses 1 down through verse number 4. When I get there, I'm going to start reading, so we're fixing to have to close here. Chapter 3, verses 1 through 4. The Bible says, If ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Set your affections on things above, not on things on this earth. You see, I think we got our heads buried in the sand. Very few of us are looking up. We allow the devil to defeat us way too often. We get in the, the, pity state, the pity state of our lives when we feel like the world and God and everybody else is against us. We lower our heads and we never raise our hearts and never raise our hands and we never lift up our voice to praise the Lord and that what allows us to get so despondent in this life. The Bible says, and I'll read that to you, verse number two, set your affections on things above and not on things on the earth. For ye were dead, <laughs> and your life is hid with Christ in God. When Christ, who is our life, shall appear, then shall ye also appear with him in glory. This, that abundant life that we have in Christ by the faith that we have in the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, folk, this is the best life we could ever live. Amen. If there wasn't anything else than this, this would still be the best life. Amen. But we got something to look forward to. We got far more greater things that's going to happen and take place. We see that the abundant life is, an irradi is a radiant life. John chapter 1, verse number 4 says, In him was life. And the life was the light of men. It's one thing for you to be made the righteousness of God in him. And the Bible tells us in 2 Corinthians 5, 21, For he hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. It's one thing for you to be made the righteousness in him. But it is another thing to realize that his righteous life is in you. And the Bible tells us that in the book of 1 John chapter 3 and verse number 7. The Bible says, Little children, let no man deceive you. He that doeth righteousness is righteous, even as he is righteous. And that word doeth just simply means he that practices righteousness. We're supposed to practice righteousness. We're supposed to practice doing right. Now listen, sometimes we get our feathers ruffled. 
Sometimes we have to ask God to forgive us. Sometimes we can't let the sun go, uh, don't let the sun go down on our anger. We're all human. We're all flesh and blood. We all get upset sometimes. But we should not let that rule our lives. We think about things that come in our life that rob us from the things that will help us to fulfill and live in that abundant life. I'm going to have to close here. Righteousness is doing that which is just right. That's the simple definition. The Bible tells us in Ephesians chapter 6 and verse number 14, it says, Therefore, having your loins girded about with truth and having on the blessed plate of righteousness. If you'll notice, that is in the Ephesians chapter 6 where it talks about putting on the whole armor of God, the blessed breastplate plate of righteousness. If you'll notice, that covers our most important and our most vital organ, which is what? Our heart. Men and women and all mankind, before they ever quit yielding themselves to the Lord and go back on God, before they ever quit that openly, that takes place in their heart before it comes out in evidence. That's why we got to protect this heart. That's why we need that breastplate of righteousness to protect our heart, to protect our, to protect our, or, or our vital organs. And listen, the devil is firing his darts ever chance he gets. We have to be careful. And can I say tonight that not only the, bless, the breastplate, but we need that whole armor. If he can't get you in the heart, he'll get you in the head. The helmet of salvation. If he can't get you there, he'll get you somewhere. It says put on the loins, gird up. The feet shod with the preparation of the gospel. He'll try to get you to move from side to side and cause you to step in different directions. We did all of that. We ought to equip ourselves with that and just do that which is right. An abundant life is a life that is yielded unto the Lord. Let's stand if you would please. Look, I'm really excited about revival. I'm excited because I know some of you are excited. Because of some of the things that you say and some of the things that you do and some of the things that you talk about. That's so encouraging. But we still got to do our part. We got to do what it takes to make us to get in the spirit of revival. Let's pray God will give us that. Pray for revival. Pray that we will line ourselves up. Pray that we, as the people of God, will have that abundant life. Tonight while our heads are bowed and eyes are closed, if anyone needs to come to the altar for any reason, you can slip out and come. Maybe you have a burden. Maybe you have a need uh, you'd like to share with. Come down to the altar and pray. You say, well, preacher, I don't have to come to the altar and pray. No, you don't. But let's, tonight, let's don't leave unless we know that we got everything settled between us and the Lord. When we leave tonight, we can leave and say, Lord, it's been good to have been in the house of the Lord. Anyone need to come? Anyone? Well, I appreciate you coming tonight. Appreciate the opportunity to preach. Enjoyed the service. Felt, enjoyed the good spirit that we felt in the Lord's house. Looking forward to the Lord's day coming Sunday. Hope everyone plans to come. We had a good number this past Sunday, but we had about 20 or 25 folk that are normally here that wasn't able to be here Sunday, and uh, we would have had a good crowd. So now all of y'all come back, and don't stay out. 
let that other crowd come in. Let's all come back together. You say, well, preacher, if I get round to it, one day we're going to have round to it Sunday. We're going to pass out round to it to everybody. And then you won't have an excuse, okay? All right. God bless you. It's good to see you tonight. Be careful going home. Uh, be much in prayer for the request and pray for this coming Lord's Day that the Lord will give us a great service and a great time in his house. Amen? Looking forward to you being here. Brother Buddy, if you would, would you dismiss us?